Uh, it is so good to be here. I can't tell you how I feel as I look at the number of young people in this hall. I am filled with hope. And I just wish that I could bring every parent across this country, every priest, every bishop, every sister, all Catholics, to look upon you. And they would be filled with hope. The church is alive and active. Amen? Amen. It is alive and active. I am also alive and active because um, I have five children. Um, and I think uh, I should introduce my wife who is the co-founder of CCO by the way, Angel, and she'll be giving a talk tomorrow. My oldest daughter, Milen, Joe, Caleb, Natalie, and Jana. I'm also very excited to have my brother, Dennis, and his wife, Nicole, if they can stand up. And I am extremely excited that their daughter, Melissa, is here. Why I'm excited for Melissa to be here is because she is my goddaughter. And I want her to know that every day, almost every day, Almost every day of her life, I prayed for her. And so this is the first time she's going to have an opportunity to see CCO and to hear me speak. But I understand, Angel came to me a few minutes before I came up here and she said that um, Melissa was in the washroom. And there's a couple girls, I don't know where you are, but you were saying, Andre is the next speaker. I love to hear him. He's great. Oh, I'm so excited to go and listen to Andre. <laughs> and Melissa heard this. And she goes, that's my uncle. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> anyway, Melissa. Uh, uh, yes, I am your uncle. <laughs> but I want you to know, watching this video <laughs> reminds me how difficult it is to be a founder. <laughs> It is difficult. It's not easy. Because over and over again, your weaknesses are exposed for everyone to see. I want to share a couple experiences with you. A couple years ago, there's this priest who, is, who really is very supportive of CCO. And uh, he was telling a couple staff that um, when... Andre comes in town, when your founder comes in town, I really want to meet him. And so he got his wish. I came and visited and he came right over to me and he says, Andre, I just want you to know that I think CCO is great and you're the founder. But I always thought you'd be taller. <laughs> See? At that moment, I realized I wasn't 6'2". So. But also, I, a couple years ago, I was giving a talk. And, uh, and after the talk, I went to the back, and there was this professor that came over to me. And again, he was very supportive of CCO. And uh, he said how great it was. And he goes, you know, CCO is a unique ministry in so many ways. Like, I've done a lot of study of church history, and founders are always well-educated. <laughs> I guess I should have been in school, but anyway. There's one person that said, you're the founder of CCO? I thought founders were dead. <laughs> but you know, it, over the last 20 years, people are always trying to, to kind of 
elbow themselves into the position of the founder. Like for example, example Eric Mayet out in Halifax. I get an email a week saying, so how do I become the founder? <laughs> Andre, like, do you think I could become the founder over and over again? But I don't even know what's happening in Vancouver. I'm very concerned. Okay? I was, I was at the Eucharistic Congress in Quebec. We had a retreat house. And Brett, now you heard Brett this morning, huh? Great speaker. Didn't he have things to say? He's been, he's been a great friend of mine, but he's been around for a long time doing great things in Vancouver, part of this movement called CCO, which I'm the founder. Anyway, he, uh, we're sitting down and having breakfast, and I could see this young girl um, wanting to come in and speak to us. And so I, I waved her on and brought her to us, and you could see that she was, she was nervous, but she felt like very privileged that she was in the presence of the founder of CCL. <laughs> and she introduced herself, she had, you know, her name, and she said, are you Brett Powell, the founder of CCL? <laughs> you know, it's been difficult, but there's been some perks to being the founder of CCO. It was just uh, in the last couple months, I was meeting with this businessman, and he was, again, very impressed with CCO, but what impressed him the most is that we raise our own money. And he couldn't believe it. And he's going, you're the founder of it? Oh, great, oh, right on. And he goes, so what is your budget? And I said, well, it's, it's actually over $2 million. You make two million dollars? <laughs> yes, I make two million dollars. <laughs> and that's the greatest perk of being the founder, so. <laughs> Actually, the greatest joy of being a founder is I was there right at the beginning. And I witnessed thousands. I've had the privilege of witnessing thousands of young people being impacted and transformed by the gospel. People's hearts change. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. And that is the greatest joy that I have. You know, from my conversion in 1981, Jesus, the gospel, always, always been stirred up in me. I love the name of Jesus. He's captured my heart. I'm moved by him. I can remember... My first Christmas after my conversion. And we went to midnight mass with my family, which we have eight children. Um, and I remember bringing a Bible. And I opened up to the, the nativity, the narrative in, in Luke. And to read this story of the birth of Christ. And I was moved to the core. It's almost like I was reading it for the very first time. It was like it was happening right before me. Jesus, the King of Kings, my Savior, was being born. I was so affected that it brought tears of joy. And so I was moved so much that I, I gave and directed my brother, uh, Roly, to read it. I said, look at this. And he looks at me confused, confused and said, oh, sure. And he read about a line. He said, thanks a lot. Obviously, he wasn't as impacted by this passage as I was. But Jesus was coming and becoming alive. Every time I hear his name, I was moved. Sometimes this zeal for Jesus brought me to places which, um, well, put me in uncomfortable